Welcome to Configuring Serverless Computing on Azure. My name is Thomas Mitchell. I'm an Azure content author at Cloud Academy, and I have over 25 years of deep IT experience, several of those with cloud technologies. As cloud adoption marches forward, more and more organizations are relying on serverless computing options for hosting IT applications and solutions. By leveraging serverless applications, organizations often see a decrease in time to market along with reduced code requirements. Serverless applications are also often more scalable. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what serverless is and what core offerings of serverless are in Azure. We'll touch on at a high level Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps. So what exactly is serverless? Does it mean that there are no servers at all to worry about? Well, not exactly. Serverless just means that an organization doesn't need to worry about dealing with servers, whether it's hosting, scaling, or monitoring. When an organization deploys a serverless solution in Azure, these things are taken care of as part of the solution itself by Azure. And it's done so under the covers. And because the serverless apps are built on a consumption-based rate, the organization saves money because charges aren't incurred unless the app is actually used. This is especially helpful to developers because it helps them to focus on a solution's business logic rather than worrying about running up costs. There are two core services that form the foundation of serverless in Azure. They're Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps. The intent of both is to allow developers to build applications with minimal code requirements. Azure Functions is an Azure offering that allows an organization to run small pieces of code in the cloud. These small pieces of code are referred to as functions, hence the name of the offering. Azure Logic Apps is an offering that provides the developer with a visual designer that can be used to model and automate workflows. Azure offers several tools that assist developers with the development, deployment, and management of serverless applications in the cloud. Serverless apps can be built using Visual Studio, or they can be built right from within the Azure portal as well. Apps that are developed can then be instantly deployed. Monitoring of those apps is even provided by Azure itself, and such monitoring is accessible via the Azure portal, or through APIs and SDKs. Monitoring of serverless applications can also be integrated with log analytics and application insights. Azure Functions is a serverless computing solution available in Microsoft Azure. Leveraging Azure Functions allows you to run small bits of code, otherwise known as functions, in Azure. Instead of writing an entire application or deploying an entire infrastructure to support that application, Azure Functions allows you to just write the code that's needed to perform specific tasks or to solve a specific problem. What this does is make development more productive. Azure Functions supports numerous development languages, including C, F, Node, Java, and PHP. Because it's built on a consumption basis, you're only billed for the time when code is run. And because it's Azure-based, serverless solutions can be deployed in Azure and they can be scaled when necessary. Key features of Azure Functions include choice of language, pay-per-use pricing, bring your own dependencies, stuff like integrated security, simplified integration, as well as flexible development and an open source runtime. By offering a choice of language, Azure Functions allows you to write functions using your choice of development language. The pay-per-use pricing model allows you to pay only for the time spent running your code. And because Azure Functions supports NuGet and NPM, you can use your favorite libraries or bring your own dependencies, so to speak. The integrated security of Azure Functions protects HTTP-triggered functions with OAuth providers, including Azure AD, Facebook, Google, Twitter, and even Microsoft accounts. The simplified integration that Azure Functions supports allows you to leverage Azure services as well as software as a service offerings. With flexible deployment options, 
Azure Functions allows you to code functions right from the Azure portal. However, you can also deploy your code through GitHub, Azure DevOps services, and other supported development tools. For those that are so inclined, the open source Azure Functions runtime is also available on GitHub. Azure Functions supports multiple triggers and multiple bindings. A trigger determines how a function is invoked. When coding a function, you can specify exactly one trigger, which will have associated data. The data that's associated with a trigger is typically the payload that triggers the function to begin with. Input and output bindings, which are both optional, are used to connect to data from within a function's code. And while a function can only have one trigger, it can have multiple input and output bindings. Well, whether you need to process data, integrate systems, or build APIs, or even do some IoT work, Azure Functions is a great offering to leverage. Virtually any task that needs to be run on a schedule can be addressed with Azure Functions. Common examples would be things like image processing and file maintenance. Built into Azure Functions are several trigger templates that are intended for common usage scenarios. Such trigger templates include those that you see on your screen. The HTTP trigger allows you to trigger execution of your code via an HTTP request, while the timer trigger allows you to execute batch tasks on a predefined schedule. The Cosmos DB trigger processes Cosmos DB documents when they are added or updated in collections within a NoSQL database. Blob trigger allows you to process Azure storage blobs when they are added to containers, while Q trigger allows you to respond to messages when they arrive in an Azure storage queue. The event grid trigger responds to events that are delivered to a subscription in an Azure event grid, and event hub trigger does the same for events delivered to an Azure event hub. The service bus queue and service bus topic triggers connect code to other Azure or on-prem services by listening to message queues or by subscribing to topics. So how much does all this functionality cost? Well, Azure Functions offers two kinds of pricing plans. It offers the consumption plan and the app service plan. The consumption plan provides all necessary compute resources that are needed to run your functions. There's no need to be concerned with resource management. You'll only pay for the time that the code runs. When using the app service plan, you run your functions just like you would web apps. If you are already using app service for other apps, you're able to run your functions on the same plan at no additional cost. With Azure Logic Apps, you can automate tasks, business processes, and workflows when integrating applications, systems, data, and services across enterprises and organizations. Azure Logic Apps simplifies the design and build out of scalable on-prem and cloud-based solutions for integration, data integration, system integration, enterprise application integration, or EAI, and business-to-business -business communications. Using Azure Logic Apps, you can automate workloads such as the processing and routing of product orders across on-prem systems and cloud services. You can also use Azure Logic Apps as a monitoring system to send email alerts from Office 365 to notify you when specific events occur in various systems or applications. With a gallery of over 200 connectors at your disposal, you can build enterprise class integration solutions using Azure Logic Apps. You can leverage services such as Azure Functions, Service Bus, Office 365, Storage, and more when building with Azure Logic Apps. Azure Event Grid is a fully managed event routing service from Microsoft. This intelligent service provides functionality that allows for event consumption via a publish subscribe model. You can use Azure Event Grid to react to events from Azure and from non Azure services in virtually real time fashion. Azure Event Grid allows you to build applications using an event based design 
by selecting an Azure resource that you wish to subscribe to and then providing the event handler or webhook endpoint to send the event to. EventGrid supports events that come from many Azure services, including storage blobs and even resource groups. You can also support your own events with EventGrid by using custom topics. Azure EventGrid allows you to use filters so that you can route specific events to different endpoints or even multicast to multiple endpoints. In either case, EventGrid ensures that events are reliably delivered. Although it's not a complete list of supported integrations, the image that you see on your screen depicts how EventGrids connects many different sources and handlers. Microsoft Azure Service Bus is an enterprise integration broker that's fully managed in Microsoft Azure. While it's considered a solid platform for asynchronous data transfer between apps and services, as well as state transfer via messages, Azure Service Bus is most often used for decoupling applications and services from one another. An example of how Azure Service Bus would typically use messaging to transfer business data would be a scenario where a retail store needs to transfer information such as sales orders and inventory adjustments. Using Azure Service Bus to decouple applications allows an organization to improve the reliability of an application or service by allowing transactions to occur even if the client side of the application and the server side of the application are not online at the same time. This also helps drive scalability of the application as well. Azure Service Bus can also be used to deploy workflows that involve message ordering and even message deferral. Key terms to be aware of when working with Azure Service Bus include namespaces, queues, and topics. Namespaces are essentially application containers, or scopes, that contain sets of messaging components. A single namespace can include multiple queues and multiple topics. Speaking of queues, queues are often used for point-to-point -point communication and are used to send and receive messages. They also hold messages until a receiving application can process them. Messages held in a queue are protected via redundant storage and they are delivered in pull mode, which means that messages are delivered on request. Like queues, topics can also be used to send and receive messages. However, unlike queues, which typically facilitate the point-to-point -point communications, topics are most generally used for published subscribe scenarios. A given topic supports multiple independent subscriptions, which can then receive a copy of each message being sent to that topic. If you're ready to learn about configuring serverless computing in Azure, let's get started.